let's call to order and let's have the uh, opening invocation and the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we come today as an assembled body. We humbly request that you bless our meeting, our community and nation. Help us work for the common good. Guide us to be insightful and prudent in our intentions. Work through us to provide the spirit of welcome to all in attendance and engage in respectful and thoughtful dialogue. It's a Pledge of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic that has one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Text the flag. Honor the flag. I pledge allegiance to the executives. One under day, under God, one and indivisible. In two more. You could be me, Robert, for a minute. Shame on all of you. I've got good ears. <laughs> no, it's not you. It's not just you. It's all around me. So, uh, any comments for the public? Okay, we have a uh, request and act on adjustments for relief for specific charges by the district. Eric, would you? Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. We don't have I it there. I think Eric went out to get that information. Oh, he went. To, oh, so we went up there. Can you just leave for that? I have no idea. Oh, okay. We can come back. Yeah. Yeah. We can yeah. come back. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move that down. Uh, and, oh, here we go. Yeah, I had to get <laughs> documents. Um, on number four. So we've seen both of these uh, a couple months ago. If you recall, um, number four, the situation was the individual's property just got obliterated with barrel. Um, the pool fill valve failed open. And then obviously there must have been a uh, drain valve that was bringing it off into the ditch she never saw it um while she was dealing with all the trees and all the damage of her house excuse me uh, we're waiting for emails from her regarding yes the church. i sent that to you all about two weeks ago basically she doesn't have insurance so she's a widow um so i, I presume that she owns the house um doesn't have insurance she did get some assistance with fema that was the screenshots that i sent y'all that was a little bit, but that was dealing with um, the damage to her property. So to give you a, a um, reminder on what was involved there, um, I believe the, the overall total potential refund, uh, which is essentially half um, of the overall bill would be uh, $4,753.29. That's well, that was what, what was pending. Uh, with this particular issue, so that's still on the table. Fred, do you want to? I mean, observation on discussion during the original uh, discussion and submission by the resident. She indicated that she didn't have insurance on the pool, but had it for the house. Now we we learned that she doesn't have insurance at all. So rather than make this a um, uh, a statement of fault by uh, equipment. I'd rather do this as a hardship uh, adjustment one time under the assumption that she uh, may take steps to close down the pool so it doesn't happen again. She's not digging it up or covering it over. It's still there, still has the potential if she's made any repairs to continue to have this problem in the future. Because if you uh, agree with what she said, she'll continue to have financial problems. My answer is let's look at it as a hardship, move on. And whatever that hardship is, whatever the board decides, whether it's 100 percent, 50 percent, that's something we can discuss. But I think to to make it a um, uh, 
an adjustment based on a failure of equipment or a potential failure of uh, water smart or anything else. I don't think that's accurate for this particular case. I think it is a hardship and I think we should be responsive. But I also think this should not happen again at that particular address with her. That's my and point. Just, she has a pool service, right? I, I don't know that uh, for sure. I would assume so. I, I, I don't assume think so. she's able to do that. Um, so, one of the things I would real quick add to your point that might help that it doesn't happen again is that she make make sure that she signed up for WaterSmart. I think she, she did. She so was. I know she is now, but she wasn't at the time. That's so correct. Ideally, if this did happen again, that she would get notified not a month later. I mean, that's essentially what happened. And, and have a setting that would be abnormal. I have mine at 500 gallons right. a day. Now, we don't comment. dictate what that is, no, I know, but, but, but they need to set something to decide. Her yes. friend's comment about not having it happen again, my suggestion is once we decide on the hardship amount that we're going to do, it's predicated on the fact that she we get proof from the pool service that she has done what Fred has suggested so it doesn't happen again. So in other words, we grant it, but it's predicated on the fact that we get proof that it won't happen again. So we fix the pill valve thing or whatever. Yeah. You'd like to make a comment? I, I was, Wendy, were you all done? Mm -hmm. um, she's a widow. She may not have a pool service if she doesn't have insurance. So I think that's a really big if, and that's a pretty big assumption to make. A lot of people in the woodlands still cut their own grass. We just don't see it. Um, I Isn't would there a main switch for the pool? No. Yep. Pardon me? Electricity, but not, not water. Unplug it. You know, do something to disable the system so water won't flow. I think we should find out if she does have a pool. I'm going to say that she probably does, if given, I don't know. I'm just assuming her age, I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking more than likely that she does because I can't see her out there doing that herself. Um, I would like to know if she does, number one. And if she does, if she can get an estimate of what it would cost to do what needs to be done so we don't find a situation at the next hurricane. And I agree with the hardship versus the other. So I well, think we should do that. Did that. No, I mean, the water would still be running. She got it fixed. Um, the, you, we would see that she didn't otherwise. Yeah, it's tough. I do have a comment. Uh, during the founding of this nation, the Continental Congress met and Thomas Jefferson, they, they had a situation just like this, a widowed lady's house burned down and there was a bill before the Congress to help this lady rebuild her house at the taxpayer's expense. And Thomas Jefferson stood up and said, look, the purpose of government is not to act as a charity. And I think that's what we're doing here. Um, we gave her the tools to monitor her water and to alert her if her water got out of control like this and she failed to use that tool and i feel for her um, if anything i'll take money out of my own wallet and help her pay but i don't think it's the purpose of the government to make the other taxpayers foot the bill for her negligence okay um, negligence. All right. The circumstances of Barrow, everybody lost power. It was chaos. I'm sure she was freaked out about what was happening in her backyard, her house, and her pool. I understand what you're saying, and I love history. It's great. But I think we also need to show some compassion and have a hardship situation in this particular case. Um, nothing was intentional on her part, and I don't believe it was negligence. I, I don't think she, nobody was prepared for what took place here on Barrow. And so anybody could be accused of negligence if something happened to their property if they make a plan for something such as Beryl. Beryl is a freak. So I understand what you're saying. I respect what you're saying. And I agree we shouldn't be a charity. But on the other hand, I think we do need to look at hardship and compassion under extraordinary circumstances, which I feel Beryl was for everybody here. And the Veterans Administration was created after the Civil War. And President Lincoln said every widow and child will be taken care of. So we, we can go back and forth with history every, you know, toe to toe, but, you know, I'm more inclined to help somebody who's a widow rather than a very large business that we've already discussed. Like you put two cases in front of me, I'd rather help a widow out who has now taken all the steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. And because this meeting is recorded, all the other residents know that and see can see this meeting that, you know, you need to sign up for this. Now, if everybody's power was out because Center Point didn't restore power south of Woodlands Parkway 
for almost a week. Like her cell phone couldn't have been charged. She couldn't have known what was going on. She, you know, I looked on my phone. She lives right behind a ditch. I'm sure she didn't have email. People didn't know. She People didn't have, know. She didn't have email. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say I, I don't think we as a body can uh, require her to perform actions. You mean of doing something with the pool? I think that's her responsibility, her, her decision. And, you know, half of this bill or more is a one time lifetime exemption. So it happens again, it, it, you know, we come back with less than half. Um, I think if she set up for, for a, um, a water smart and she has the thing set, I, I, I think I appreciate that, that system. And, uh, you know, also, you know, um, you know, she is a widow. I, I believe her husband passed away about three years ago. And uh, I'm sure this is one of the few storms that, you know, she went through without her husband being there. And it's quite probably quite shocking to see what That's happened. I, I I can tell you that you know uh, after I told my wife a little about that, she made me go out and show her all the valves. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> and uh, so I, I I was out there, you know, and I'll tell you what I did discover because I'm paying attention. I had a, I have a pinhole leak in the valve in my backflow preventer, so I have a backflow preventer sitting on my garage floor, all assembled, waiting for the rain to stop so I can put a new one in. So uh, I I. I I appreciate what Tom said. Um, I, I think the fact that she's in a very modest home, very modest home if compared to the Woodlands. You know, she's a widow. I'm sure she, this was a shock to her. I mean, her insurance adjuster came out and says, it's too dangerous to go out there. And so- that, uh, my, That's my point. How could there be an insurance adjuster if there's no insurance? I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of flew I, in the face. I, I, you know, I think you have an adjuster. I think the word insurance adjuster was maybe misstated. Misstated. I think it was FEMA. It was likely this FEMA, FEMA guy. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. She has flood insurance. No, right. no, no. The FEMA was just emergency services, and yeah. you can get a certain amount of money. You file yeah. with FEMA, and they, they probably come out. I didn't have a Trump sign up. <laughs> they probably come out and uh, and they inspect the house and they uh, they make some uh, you know uh, compensation and uh, can you remind us what the total bill was? Four thousand and change. No, the no. total bill was. Uh, I, uh, that's right. Yeah, I don't have fees and interest. it was uh, it was around nine thousand dollars. So she still has has to pony up at least five, right? Five. Yeah, this that's would, a lot. This would be up for a refund of forty seven fifty three. And I have a question for you. If the power is out and you don't have internet, you don't know about Water Smart anyway. Oh, that well, day. But well, that you day. would have prior. But you could have prior. What I'm saying is if you have, I didn't have any power for a while. So I wasn't able to get my emails. I wasn't able to use yeah. my computer. So how would it have benefited her? Because she wouldn't have been able to read an email that said, your water is this, this, and this. So there was no way during that kind of an emergency for her to even be aware. So whether she had it or not would be irrelevant for Beryl. I, I, I have, I've solved that problem in my house with a minor yeah. uh, event, a minor, minor device, but she would not know how to do that. So there's no use. She, you, you, she would she would not yeah. get an email until the power came back out. She and depending upon the type of provider. Uh, yeah, she's a lot of what ifs there. I, yeah, I might have but, but, but you understand what I'm saying? Sure. Just just common, I'm trying to come from common sense and the actual reaction she could of the still reality. Suffer a loss because of the, uh, the lack of uh, internet power to get notified. That, that's right. Yeah, and the del the remainder is still <laughs> extremely large bill. That's what I'm saying. You know, so we could give her terms, right? And we could. And any more discussion? All right, I have to say. No, my my concept was if uh, we can give her terms. Uh, put a lien on a house, um, and uh, well, I'm just saying uh, to make it pain, as painless for her as possible by giving her a hundred months or what. Know, Fred, putting a lien on somebody's house aggravates their situation in terms of they want to get anything else in terms of a loan in the future. I would never do that to somebody unless it, it was it's a not a common set up a plan for folks. Yes. But it's not going to be a long term plan. Okay, I mean, it would still need to be yeah, you, know, you know in a few months. Um, it would be in the you know roughly three or four thousand dollar delta. Um, so I mean, we could work with her for sure. On, on the remainder, if you chose to agree to the, the pending review. I understand what Tom said. I understand what uh, Wendy said. And uh, 
I'm open to ever, anything at this point. I, I, I don't think it's a hill to die on, but I, I also respect the fact that we aren't here to provide uh, social services or uh, uh, welfare to people within our community. Um, so it's a difficult situation, and I'm open there to. Was an extraordinary circumstance. You know, power is out. You can't. You can't get down a street. You can't leave your house. Some people. I mean, it was. It was not a typical situation. And even if she did have the water smart, she wouldn't have been able to access it. So she was completely unaware of what was going on. I'm sure, and panicked about everything else that was happening. No power. Her food. The trees every which way. Did something land on the house? We don't know if there was any other da damage to her home. So there are a lot of ex don't disagree. A lot of circumstances that you know we're not aware of. And well, I I'm sympathetic to her plight. Uh, I also think that uh, we have to create a standard on how we operate and what our role is in the community. Um, so I'm open to any suggestion, ladies or gentlemen. Motion. Motion. We need to. We need to. What, what are we motioning on? <laughs> well, well, I make the motion, and then we'll discuss it. Um, all right, I make a motion that we waive 50% of the remaining balance and set up the remainder on terms with the Woodlands Water Agency. I'll so, so, so hold it, let's, let's choose a number. What does that right. mean? What's, what's the balance? Of, of the roughly nine, uh, the, the, using our formula that we use for everyone, um, the total refund to be contemplated with the one-time GRP you know, wave and all that would be uh, a refund or a benefit to her of $4,753.29. That's, that's what the program spits out you know, under the policy. Um, then she would be responsible for the rent remainder, which I don't have that in my, on this sheet, but it's roughly, it's just less than half. Roughly $5,000. Well, no, it will be, it'll be just around 4,000. I have a question. Do we know what her typical monthly expenditure is for water? I mean, not much. No, um, roughly about 50, 51 gallons Her average. Number of years, yeah, the last three years, your average is 17,000 gallons um, during, that was July, so it's a, it's a hot month. So, and, you know, this, this was, um, so 50, seven, this was 743,000. Um, so it was significant, yeah. Yeah, 17,000 average is 743,000. So, Tom, would you like to rephrase your, uh, your motion and put a number in there. Okay. All right, I make a motion that the Woodlands Water Agency waive two thousand dollars and set up payment plans for her to repay. That is uh, agreeable to her and the Woodlands Water Agency. Carefully worded. Is that a reasonable motion or needs to be? I'm trying to understand it. Um, Just take two thousand dollars off the remaining balance since we don't know the remaining balance. Plus the forty-seven hundred, so you're gonna you're gonna take off sixty-seven. In other words, mud forty-six is going to take two thousand dollars of her balance. So he's he's not taking he's not a, he's not accepting right the forty-seven hundred. You're reducing that to two thousand. Is that is that no? No. Okay. Except in the forty-seven plus two thousand. Plus two thousand. Plus two thousand. So we're going to increase the repayment. You're to decreasing her liability. So whatever that delta is, we... an additional two thousand dollars. So so we're going to take the Eric's recommendation of four thousand seven hundred and fifty-three point two nine. We were going to we were going to waive that, right? We're not accepting his. Instead, we're going to increase the, the her, her refund. This is called a refund to sixty-seven fifty-three twenty-nine. So we're in, we're going above what er, uh, uh, Eric is rep, rep, reprimanding. That totally confused me. What you just said. I re, I understood that one, and I think that's what I is that what. All right. So your refund. No, no, don't just choose an amount. <laughs> the money we're going to two thousand additional dollars that she above, does not, above the forty-seven. Above, above the forty-seven. Okay, so that means I'm going to I'm going to state restate this, and then and so instead of accepting 
uh, Eric's $47.53.29. Tom is proposing that we increase that to $67.53.29. So we're going to go above Eric's recommendation for a refund of $2,000. Yes. So now, is there a second? Second that. With the uh, caveat? Uh, and I no, no caveats. Know. There's no caveats. You, well, you, you just... there's a question. In the agreement you make with her, she has to be able to agree to make that payment as well, correct? Uh, 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 payment plan, we'll work a payment plan out okay. with her. Okay. We'll, we'll work that out. She can't make the delta. She does it all the time. Yeah. And this is a one-time event. Yes. Correct. Yes, um, agreed. And water smart. <clears throat> and water smart. Which okay, so is that my motion? <laughs> Let, let you you practice it. <laughs> no, I just we never got a second, so now we're in a discussion. So what, second. What, All right, second. Okay. Okay, and now we're discussing it. Discuss we're any clarifying. any clarifying discussion, Fred. I'm okay with it. Okay. I think it's very reasonable, and I appreciate okay. it. And I think okay. it's a good sends a good message. Okay. Any yeah. other uh, discussion? Okay. I call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. No right. nays. We'll implement that. Uh, Thank you. Okay. okay, so the next one, at least for now, is going to be a little simpler. Um, <laughs> it's more complex, but simpler in this case. Um, so uh, we um, we gathered up information to answer all their questions. They had a bunch of, you know, why this, why this, and so we gathered that up. We had a meeting with the manufacturer of the meter and not the, a testing outfit because it had already been tested by a third party, but we actually brought the manufacturer in here. And we came to the conclusion that we were going to pull the meter and send it back to the manufacturer and have it um, analyzed, deconstructed, and de-engineered to see if there's a possibility that this thing went glitchy, basically. Um, and so we then, after we met with them, we pulled the meter, we did that. We then had a meeting with the, the business folks that were here, uh, laid out all of the answers to their questions that were on their PowerPoint, and then also made them aware of what, what, that we were gonna send the meter off and all that. And then once, so that's usually a three or four month process for the deconstruct, you know, for the whole an, uh, analysis. We asked the manufacturer to move it up as fast as we could. Uh, we also knew already that 46 was probably not going to have a meeting in December. So we said, well, we still want you to move it up fast because we want to get the information back and then we can start having meetings with the developer and then bring it back to you uh, once we have the data. We just have the data at this point. So um, we did go out in the field and confirm the location of the meter. We def there's definitely, there was a piece of broken pipe sitting there. Uh, whether or not that, um, you know, again, the question is, where did 75,000 gallons of water per day go? Now it's it's near a wooded area, kind of near a ditch. So it is plausible, but again, it's a lot of water. So um, that's where we're at today. And once we have the data from the manufacturer, we'll, we'll receive that data. Another thing that I'm gonna check, and I, want, I haven't told Chris this yet, but um, I wanted to look at the overall pumpage, 2.5 million in a month, we might see in the overall numbers, possibly. It depends on them. Yeah, that's right. So I'm gonna we're, I want to go back to the back to those months and see if there's any something weird, because if it doesn't show up as additional flow in from your from SRA side, then maybe that's another data point that it didn't that there was a glitch. I don't know. So anyway, they did indicate that it is the manufacturer that it is possible. It has happened. It is extremely rare that the, Wait, the glitch. Did you say the manufacturer has said it has happened to them before? Uh, the, the, the meter, they have seen where a meter could glitch and throw something weird up. In this case, it didn't throw it. What was ironic is it threw it up to right about the, the, the capacity of how much water could go through the actual size pipe that they had. So that's that's why we're all saying, well, it's it's definitely plausible yeah. because that amount of water, because that's what we look at is gallons per minute, and we know how much gallons per minute goes through the size of a particular the pipe. size pipe, right? And it aligned with that, yes. which was, you know, if it was full going, but again, so anyway, yeah, it is fascinating. It's it's a, This is a complex one. I've never seen one like this. Um, so more to come. 
So okay, we'll be so. getting back information in December and January. We'll make a decision. I'll bring it to your, yeah. If there's anything I have, I can share it with you prior to January and and uh, and we'll be working on it behind the scenes once we get the data in. Right. Ideally, we can work it out with them and move on. Uh, we won't have to come back to you, but we'll see. So um, I'll make, get a motion to table this to January. I'll do that. Second. I'll motion to table. Uh, uh, if you agree, please vote. Yeah. Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, so we're going through the consent agenda now. And so anybody have anything they want to pull off the consent agenda? No. Okay, we'll make a motion to we'll make uh, a motion that we can we accept the consent agenda. Second. 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 All in favor, say aye. 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 Hey, um, well, on the regular agenda, I'd like to move item uh, 14 up to uh, in front of 11. And that is the uh, uh, considering direct trustees to vote for an appointment of the vacant. Uh, it says WWA seat on the SRA GRP review committee. And I believe we have two people here to speak uh, for, for that position. Kim, would you like to go first? Speak first. Oh, Eric. Eric. Yeah, well, you, you, you haven't uh, introduced us. <laughs> you know what's coming on. No okay, so I've been to it. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Kim Wright, our new deputy um, general manager. Uh, she came, as I mentioned last month, she came from South Montgomery County Mud. Um, and uh, she started two weeks ago. And, uh, we're, uh, we're feverishly getting her up to speed and uh, utilizing. Uh, the, the few weeks we have left with Mike for some transition um, just to get up to speed. So uh, things are going great and look forward to a good future. So, okay. um, so you guys have a summary about me in your package. So hopefully you've had a chance to, to look at it. So I'm not going to repeat a lot of that. I did want to take advantage of the opportunity just to tell you a little bit more about me on the detail that's not included in that, and then also a little bit about my philosophy on the GRP and to answer any questions that you might have. Um, as you know, the GRP was planned and the surface water treatment plan was constructed um, as a solution for large, large volume groundwater users uh, to achieve compliance with local rules and regulations. Although there are currently no rules and regs in place, the existing GRP contract signed still remain. There, um, and that's the, the, the GRP contract was signed by participants that converted and had not converted or have not converted. There is a responsibility of the GRP review committee members to advise in a manner that considers the needs that exist for today and in the future, along with consideration of the costs associated with meeting those needs. As a representative of the GRP review committee, I recognize the need to make available and provide the needed resources such as affordable clean drinking water and other utilities for this fast growing area, while also making decisions that protect our aquifers today and in the future. There may be limitations with the existing GRP contract with adding new participants um, and with no rules and regulations currently in place that would help drive the need for surface water. However, remaining vigilant to think outside the box collaboratively and cohesively to promote efficiency and continuous increased utilization of the surface water treatment plant. We all recognize that needs to occur. I am technically minded. My knowledge background and experience are diverse. I understand projects, budgets, asset management, operations, and uh, maintenance. One must be engaged in details when required and supported by knowledgeable resources and staff to make things happen and to have progress. Relationships and communication are also key in this process. I have successfully planned for and managed multi-million dollar assets, budgets, and capital projects in multiple roles. I have collaborated significantly to achieve operational successes and to meet defined goals. This has been possible by not knowing all the answers, but through my understanding, my experiences, 
my collaboration and accurate data gathering that I've used to make recommendations and in decision making. I could not have done it without diversified and collaborative teams. I am currently a Woodlands Water Agency employee. I'm not elected and I'm neutral. My background in this industry and working in multiple disciplines reflects my ability and my desire to work with the public and to support those in our community. So with that, I ask you for your vote, I ask you for your support, I ask you for a recommendation for your trustee um, to, to place their trust in me and give me that opportunity. And so thank you for your consideration. And last but not least, I've said it over and over, but I am so happy to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I look forward to supporting Eric, the Woodlands Water team, each of you, and uh, the trustees along with your efforts. Thank you. Eric, do you want to uh, have the other party present and then we'll get asked questions? Do you want it to question after? Each one, whatever you'd like. It's, it's think, happened let, different. Let's, let's ask both of them speak. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Then we can, we can play for Thank, Thank you. Almost evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm Brad Hound. Um, appreciate the opportunity to come and talk before you guys and give you a little bit of background and make a sales pitch for why I'm the right person to represent WWA and Woodlands on the uh, GRP. Couple things I want to do. Um, I want to go over a little bit about who I am. I want to cover a little bit about why I'm here, why I want to serve in the GRP, talk a little bit about what I think we need to do in the GRP, um, then talk a little bit about some of the other questions that uh, we might have asked and, and try to get that information going, and then be able to answer any additional questions we guys want to have. Um, so you've got my resume, so I won't go through that. It's not a detailed resume, but it's hits some of the highlights. Um, chemical engineer from Georgia Tech, um, 40 plus years in the hydrocarbon processing industry, uh, retired in 2021 from Exxon Mobil as a senior technical executive. Uh, while I was working, I, I did have my PE. I went inactive as I, as I retired. Um, during those 40 years, um, had all sorts of experiences working for a large company, um, including research, engineering, and technical support for operations. Uh, involved in both technical leadership and line management. Um, involved in a number of uh, decision analysis, uh, evaluating economic alternatives, technology alternatives, uh, have a pretty good concept of how, how decision you know, matrices are working and how you drive change in an organization. One of the things I bring to the, to the uh, to discussion is a deep background in the private sector. Um, I understand what it means to build a, a cost benefit analysis, I understand what it means to create a profit uh, compared to a loss. Uh, I understand what it means to motivate people for change. And that leads me to why am I here? Uh, 2022, I came in on being on a MUD, ran for MUD, elected to uh, MUD 7, and then 2024 moved up to the trustee position. When I started, GRP was like, what's GRP? Why do we have GRP? What does it do? In the three years I've been involved in this, it's been amazing for me to understand what's happening in our community, in Woodlands, in larger uh, Montgomery County. We have a major problem with water in the community. We've got Indecision, you've got lawsuits, you've got attacks going on, and most importantly, you've got overuse of groundwater, increasing subsidence, and in lowering levels in our wells. And that's an issue that's not just for the Woodlands, but countywide. GRP is the key organization that drives the use of the surface water plant that's on Lake Conroe. That facility has been in use for a long time. And for the last many years, it's been operated at half capacity. Meanwhile, the county is short on water. We have Conroe in the process of building four new wells. The packet includes information about the uh, well levels beginning to go down again. You think they're going down now, add four more wells. We 
We've got communities that are limiting development because they say they don't have some good water. We have to get a handle on water within Montgomery County, and that impacts the woodlands. That starts and may stop with what do we do with GLP. You got a plant that the community has invested in, put the assets on the ground, and we're operating it half full. Not everybody agrees, but in my engineering basis, as we increase the capacity of that plant, it should become more efficient. It's disgraceful that we're operating a plant at half capacity. No private industry would say, well, I'm happy, I've got limitations, I can't uh, address those limitations. We have serious problems. I don't understand all the details because I'm not on the board and I'm exposed to all the information. But yes, we have a problem that is limiting us to go forward, but we need a team to get in there and drive change. So we address those constraints, we relieve those constraints, make the changes that are needed to increase the capacity of the plant and address the water issues in Montgomery County. I've got a passion for this. I've got a background, both technical and economic and leadership to drive change. Current GRB uh, board is much more than an advisory board. As Chris has validated this week, almost every recommendation that comes out of that board is endorsed by the board of the directors of the River Authority. So what does that mean? It means that board is setting the direction for the county for surface water. What have they done in the last many years? Status quo, okay? Continue to run the plant, continue to say, well, there's nothing we can do. Well, there's gotta be something we can do. Now, I understand that in the end, the community may reject this, but that's part of our problem that we failed to win the hearts and souls of the community. The community doesn't understand the benefits and the costs associated with either increasing surface water or continue to increase groundwater. We need to take that message. We need to win the hearts and souls of the community so that we can get alignment to increase throughput in that plant. I commit to you, if you put me on that committee, put me on that board, I will work with others. The board right now is, is split and the majority is limiting throughput. They're kind of happy with the status quo. If you add me, I will try to build the relationships and move that board forward so we increase capacity, become more efficient and address a number of the issues we have in Montgomery County. Um, Issues that have come up with other MUDs. Um, one is, well, you're not an employee. How can you do this when you're not an employee? There's no requirement to be an employee. There's not even a requirement to be a, a, a MUD director or trustee. Okay, so I'm committed to, to serving. Uh, I moved here in 2014, I retired here. I expect to be here for a long time. So regardless of what happens with future MUD positions, I'd be happy to continue to serve. The appointment is for the remaining two years maybe two years a month of the existing term, which expires in January, 2027. Um, so this is, is not a lifetime appointment or, you know, Mike was on there for 10 plus years until he retired. Um, you know, I'm not asking for a 10 year appointment. I'm asking for, let's finish, go for the rest of the current term. Um, I assure you, I will keep the MUDs, the trustees and the WWA informed. Um, I think what Arthur has done with Region H, where he comes in on a regular basis to update the, the trustees, is something I'd like to like to do, propose doing with, with the GRP. Um, there's questions about, well, you keep uh, Eric informed, certainly committed to keeping Eric informed, working with him. Um, one question was also from a career development. Kim needs to, to have some engagement with the GRP. Uh, I'm totally open to that. I expect to be totally transparent in the position. I don't expect to become the gatekeeper and limiting of all interactions with the GRP. I expect to facilitate that and, if anything, increase the communication between WWA and the trustees and the GRP. Uh, where the questions have come up. Uh, that's Those are the key ones, but I'm happy to answer any other questions you guys might have. Uh, but I hope you sense my passion, you sense my, my skill set. Um, leadership and technical and economic analysis that can drive change to the GRP. So appreciate your endorsement direction with Dave to, to support me in next month's uh, trustee meeting as the representative for WWA to the GRP. So thanks so much.
I have a question for you, Kim. He just shared all the questions that were asked of him and things that have come up. Can you share questions that have come up? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I know my approach, of course, obviously, I haven't been engaged, even though I was with SJRA for quite a long time. I haven't been engaged with the GRP in a number of years. And um, so my first approach would be to go in. I stated I'm collaborative. I like to gather data, uh, get all the information that I can and, uh, and, and make decisions and recommendations. I, th I think the first Thing. You know, we've got to identify some goals that everybody uh, can target and work toward um, trying to accomplish. Uh, what is it? We've got to we've got to cohesively decide what direction um, that the, the GRP wants to go and that we may need to go. Um, so, um, you know, again, my first steps would be getting in there and getting familiar with everything again uh, before making any decisions going into it that this needs to be done. I don't have those answers right now. I have a background in that and I'm hearing the concerns, the utilization of the plan, the outreach, the public outreach, the public education, those kind of things. Those need to um, be things that, you know, need to be brought up uh, to talk about, to see how we can improve on that. Um, so anyway, and of course, I'm an employee here. I mentioned that I'm here. So obviously the interaction between me and Eric would just naturally occur. And then just giving updates to the trustees and or both the board, the board's monthly or however, you know, we need to do that. So anyway, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I said, what other questions have other I'll clarify what, so there's been eight other MAP meetings prior to this one. What other questions have they asked you about in this free form? Well, I mean, mainly just what my goals would be, mm -hmm. uh, getting on the, the committee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm trying to recall, I don't, you know, um, uh, everything Eric touched on about, you know, his collaboration with Eric and stuff. I'm here. It's a little different because I'm here, you know. Um, so is there something specific that you're thinking of? I mean, I've I, been... I'm curious about what the other buds have asked you. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Don't recall. Um, I'm sure you've adjusted your talk to reflect some of the questions you've been asked. Actually, my talk has been very consistent. Right. Yes, sir, it has. And it's just responding to the questions that have come up that has called that caused my variance in responding. So I have not I have not adjusted mine based on what uh, Brad has presented, you know, so everybody has heard the same thing from me. So question yeah. uh, actually for Eric, mm -hmm. uh, then I'll get to you. Uh, do you feel that there's a conflict, a potential conflict of interest between what the WWA and the GRP goals and objectives are and would, in fact, uh, having somebody from the WWA impede the success of Kim if she was to be on the board of the GRP, given the um, actions and activity and success, in quotes, of the GRP over the past five years? I think that the whomever it is, the, our representative is, needs to uh, push forward the goals and objectives of the trustees and of Willis Water, period. So whatever that is, and that's interesting that that question hasn't really come up across all the MUDs. It hasn't? No. It hasn't really. That was my question. I, I thought conflict would be just immediately. A couple, couple meetings ago, uh, and, I, and I believe personally that we need to build that and build some consistency. Now, having said that, speaking and hearing from directors, hearing from the candidates, et cetera, I'm hearing the same thing. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not hearing a disjoint between what we think needs to happen. Now, no one knows how to get there, right? Yeah. No, we know that there's contractual hurdles. We know there's some financial hurdles. Um, there may not be a known solution on how to how to win those, um, but I think I think we need to take a minute to at some point, you know, once the candidate gets identified and write down what 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 we're, what are we asking them to do? Because without that, we don't have any accountability either going forward. Accountability, so, uh, accountability is essential. It uh, is essential. Yeah, yeah it but is. but we can't hold them accountable if we don't know what they're, we're asking them to do. Of course, from the Woodlands perspective. That well, makes sense. Okay. Which, which, which begs the next set of questions, which is to you, Kim. Uh, how would you 
characterize the GRP performance over the past five years as uh, as it relates to its support and success for WWA and MUD 46 in particular? So, so, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut no, you short. Absolutely. I have been disengaged with the GRP other than being uh, a an owner of a receiving facility for a different entity. So I cannot speak on behalf of Woodlands Water or Mud 46. I can't. Okay. So, Brad, how do you feel about that? What would you characterize the uh, GRP performance? I think it's been lacking, primarily from the standpoint that they failed to make any progress in increasing the use of service water throughout the county. Uh, their pricing model is unique and uh, unusual to say the least. Yes, that's right. um, yeah. And it's been that way forever. And people have complained about it, but nobody has led action to change it and look at how we revise it. Um, you know. Well, how can you think we change um, with the GRP board if it's comprised, or the GRP, if it's comprised of a board of directors that is primarily SR, SRGA, SRGA rather? Well, I mean, there's six people on the board. Right. Okay. So okay. They're, they're they're not. They don't they're not to totally. Yeah. They're, they're, in fact, I would say most recent things have been four to two. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some members of the board that are not the advisory board, not the direct board of directors, that um, believe that we should do something different than what we've done the last five years. Unfortunately, they're not in the majority. My goal is to join that and, and uh, move that into the majority position. And maybe some of the people, I mean, there's been things said by existing board members like, well, if you increase the capacity of the plant, you'll drain Lake Conroe. And okay, I, I think there's a little lack of, of uh, you know, skilled oversight by the existing GRP. Well, also, okay. a sense of urgency is lacking. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, in, in, you know, everybody just, does what they think is best. I just think it's time for some some new people, new blood to come in, some people that have independence and aren't tied to maybe some of the luggage of the past. Mm -hmm. um, our past performance has been guided by WWA. Maybe it's the time to let one of the trustees guide what we do. Okay. That was my reason for my question. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I'd like to say something, you know, I used to go to the GRP meetings all the time and then when the election came up, I, I got distracted, but I went to the last meeting and I was at the GRP meeting in which uh, they they basically added uh, two, uh, two months to the uh, system, uh, 88 and 90, something like that, and they uh, they allowed one customer to leave the GRP. And the goal was not to increase capacity. I mean, they they made a point. You can watch the tape. They were avoiding increasing capacity of the system. And see, we talk about cultural change, and they've been running this system for a long time now, and it's been stagnant. There's been no process, no pro no improvement. And I think Brad would bring, you know, uh, how would you say? Should we would look at it this way? A wealth, of, a I mean, a welcome amount of fresh air into that board. And I think that's very important. And uh, you gotta remember, it's it's like us, they have six, you gotta, you gotta create team members. And I think Brad, you know, Brad worked, you know, um, one, he's a, he's a, he's a PE in chemical engineering. These, these industrial complexes, I mean, you know, this water plant, just like a refinery is very complex. And he, he's used to leading change management in that arena. And he, he's, he's, also understands the, the technical aspects of pumps and valves and actuators and pipes and all this. He understands all that. And my, my personal opinion, I think we would be, um, uh, we should be thankful that he's volunteered to, in, to inject this fresh air into this stale organization. And uh, I, I hate to say it this way, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't view your experience you know, as an, a, a positive because the SRA needs to change and they've been stagnant in change and they've been fighting it. Why do you think we lost the last general manager? And we, we need that fresh air it, because there has to be improvement. And I'll be honest, I love data. I've been slinging this, their data into my spreadsheets 
And it's a serious problem. It's a serious problem. And that 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 capacity, that pipeline is actually less than half full. And uh, so, and they refuse to increase capacity. So question for Brad. Why do you feel that the current board is married, not perfect, is married to the status quo? I can't understand. They don't have a reason for their motivation. Never, okay. Never heard anybody. I mean, what they say is this is the status quo. We can't change. We've got contracts. We've got. So they're just stymied. Okay. So, so let me give you some background. There's a tremendous difference between the private, in, private industry and public government control. That environment is one of government utilities. Okay. It was cost and price based upon people being driven to do something by government mandate. When that government mandate changed, they're clueless on what to do, okay? So they're continuing to operate and say, well, we can't do anything different because we don't have a government mandate, okay? You know, if they were a private industry, they'd be broke. They'd be gone by now, okay? They're maintained because of status quo. Status quo is not keeping our water from water levels from dropping. It's time for change. Okay. Good answer. I'll, I'll say something else. The single barrier to improving subsidence in Montgomery County is the SGRA and their policies. Because the only tool we have is the pipeline, right? To, to stop subsidence. That's the only tool we have in Montgomery County. And they refuse to increase capacity. I mean, think about that long star, don't you think? What? Kind of seems like it'd be Lone Star, but no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. You can operate. So you know, I, I've been through this a lot. No, you I'm, have your contracts. I Lone Star I'm, changed the rules of the game, I but you can still operate that plant it. properly without that regulation. I know. I just think you should keep it with the candidates rather than throwing daggers. No, no. You, 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 you injected yourself. I'm just telling you. I, I'm a, I'm a trustee. I mean, and I'm my director. So look, the the single barrier to improving subsidence in Montgomery County is the is the SRA because they refuse to use the only to tool we it. have. What? It's not an easy task to do from an engineering perspective. You, no, you, you just can't fill up the sponge again. No, no, Fred, you just run the pumps faster. Yeah, that's the whole point. And you get more water out. Right, which is probably what's motivating him to run at half speed. Well, I, I, you know, we can go into a very, you know, number driven discussion because I've been through them a lot. But the barrier to increase the capacity of the SRA and the GRB. To Chris's point, as it relates to these two candidates, um, do we have to present what the board feels at right now at this meeting, or do we do it in closed session? Or no, I, 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 I'm making these statements because I, I think Brad is a very good candidate. A candidate in normal times, we would we would not have an opportunity to make use of. You mean he comes with how many years were you at Exxon? Uh, about 35, 30 35 years. years of doing this type of work with a profit motive. And, and, and the difference between nonprofit and profit is that when you make a profit in, in a nonprofit, it just, it just comes back to us, right, in a lower rate. And I, I'll tell you, it, there's serious issues with the SRA. And um, I think Brad is the, the candidate we need to, to make sure that we can begin to make progress on fixing the GRP. And, you know, they've been at it for, what, five, six years, you can say at least that long. And there's been no progress made. I, I don't really have any questions. I'm just making a speech. All right, so what what you need to decide is how you want to give direction or if you want to give direction to your trustee. Um, sure, we could do that. I think both candidates have got uh, great credentials, but I think from um, the, the perspective of having somebody who's got um, the motivation to help the MUDs, uh, which is the closest to the constituents and the residents of our community, I think Brad's the candidate to go forward with. You make a motion? That we... So I make a motion that uh, MUD 46 supports and endorses the candidacy of uh, Brad. Second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So, Brad, do you have our endorsement? Thank you much. Kimberly, Kim, you have our endorsement as well. But you do. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> and we expect great things from you. Yeah, no. Right. I'm looking okay. forward to it. Thank you. 
Um, let's go to the. Brad, thank you for putting yourself up for the position. Oh, yeah. You have one more to do. I'm in the trustee meeting, so who knows what will happen next? Yeah. Uh, receive the regular monthly SRA Woodlands Division report. Uh, Given the amount of time left in the meeting and the other topics, I don't have anything to add, but I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have. I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, last meeting, uh, we talked about excess funds. You addressed it at that time. Um, so have you made any further inquiry on that? That's one of the things I didn't add. But yes, if you go into page 18 and 19 and the project list, I've adjusted the project wow. list. If you look under funding sources, the excess funds projects will be listed as excess funds projects. And so, for example, real quick. Uh, page 21 has the AC waterline condition assessment stated as excess funds under funding sources. And then page 23, the grit classifier, as well as the waterline easements for town center. So I did make those noca notate notations so that you could track those three projects that were approved. The other ones were included in the FY20 four budget oh, right. have been completed at this time. So those are the remaining last three. And then you all determined, sorry, are you done? I'm done. All right. And then the Craftwood pipe break I saw in here, did we figure out why it broke or was it? Uh, I'd have to look back and see which one. Page 15. Page 15, thank you. Third one on infrastructure maintenance. No, that's just ground movement, natural occurrence at that point. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And there was a huge one, um, 30 inch PVC at uh, Grogan's and research that happened two days ago. It was a big one. A GRP 30 inch PVC. So Grogan's and research. Research. Near CBI, the, the old CB9 area, those buildings there. Any related to the work being done on research? No. I mean, there wasn't contract related. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you for your, your report. Uh, number 12, receive update regarding the status of Bear Branch and Panther Branch and the Research Forest Drive drainage projects. Yes, I'll be brief, uh, but the stakeholders uh, met a couple weeks ago and listened to the um, engineer. As you recall, the model that was built was built along the lines of a particular um, solution. Um, and then that subsequently the, the updated cost estimate uh, was more than funds available. So it's kind of more of a back to the drawing board situation. Um, the stakeholders, uh, after uh, consulting with the engineer, had a lot of good discussion, uh, agreed to move forward with uh, having the engineer run the drainage model on two different scenarios, basically two different solution options, uh, not to ex and as well as getting some area data uh, from uh, historical data from flows around the woodlands that might be affecting the area. Uh, that work was to not not to exceed twenty thousand dollars and would be expected to be received by thanksgiving so as soon as i receive it or see it uh then we'll likely try to get another stakeholder meeting together and go from there you know i i've been attending i guess i've missed the first one watch the video second one uh there's good progress i'm uh i'm uh, pleased with the progress of the meeting and i'm looking forward to the next one same yeah and i'll go into real quick kind of the detail is is the, the, the option that was established that's the, 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 the estimates high, it contemplated cleaning out the two branches and then building detention at uh, Gosling and research. And we had talked about, well, can we just reduce the scope of that to the amount of money we have and see what benefit that is? And my concern with that was, have we evaluated enough other options to know if that's even the best one to be cutting? Meaning, you know what I mean? So option one and two over here that they're doing now, we'll take that, compare that to the original one and just say, is there one that's better? Okay, now what do we got to do to cut that or find money or whatever, whatever the solution is? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. Um, uh, 13, view draft of water recommendation facility number one decision matrix. Okay, um, as you know, the um, SRA and the third party engineer, Corolla engineers, uh, is evaluating the, the four options for 
uh, that we're expecting that it's going to be May, June of last year or so. Thank you. Um, or last year, or next year. Um, and it was also agreed upon that Carlo would develop and present in November um, a draft decision matrix, what they call it, to um, with the intention that eventually when the four options are finally uh, evaluated, that there is a tool of some sort that can assist in the decision making process that's you know analytical that's that's got so the uh Corolla was at the trustee meeting last week uh gave a presentation there is copies of the presentation here if you need it um in paper and what they did and this is in your packet looks like um blew it up he's blew it up so it's uh, more logical and then we'll, i think we posted it but we can also email too um there's basically the, the sheet with the blue on it is basically the seven criteria that the engineer identified uh, that the plants with options would be evaluated upon. And then those criteria were broken into sub criteria and then the sub criteria. Some of the criteria have a couple, three or four or two different sub criteria uh, within them. Um, so there were some some of the trustees have gone through the, the definitions and posted questions or, or posed rather questions and concerns. And so it was agreed upon that everybody would uh, cumulatively uh, get all their questions in, send them to me by uh, by the 1st of December, and then we would get those to the consultant. So that's the first the task is to really scrub this as well as we can and get some feedback to, um, to the consultant. The second action item, which is a little further out down the road, uh, is to fill out this other form, the one without the color on it. And the intention of this is to gain an understanding of each director or board or boards um, for how they value certain aspects of the criteria. Do you value cost? Value that more than flexibility? Do you value that, et cetera? So the intention of this would be to go through and it, the way it's set up is all you do is do you value option one more than option two? Do you value option two? It kind of goes through all of them. And then for understanding what those mean, uh, the definitions are intended to be here. So obviously this will likely be refined over the next month or so once all the um, questions come in. So um, eventually some of the MUDs have said, well, you know, obviously we need this cleaned up. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, in process. Um, and in terms of how you fill this out, uh, some of the MUDs have done some different things. A couple have said, well, why don't we all fill one out and then we'll collect those and combine them as one because each MUD will present one to the soul. Carry out the MUD members. Correct. Basically, yeah, that, well, that's one way to do it. Another uh, way that uh, a couple of MUDs have decided today is to uh, set up a workshop meeting where you do it together. And so you go through and you all can kind of think through. So we did as a team. Right, so uh, okay. there's no dict. It's it's kind of how you guys want to do that, and uh, so I'll, I'll speak a little bit. I was at the trustee board meeting. It was a uh, awful presentation. You know what I mean? You uh, they projected those forms up to the slide, and you couldn't read anything. Right. And then you can look at the handout they give you. It's very difficult to read. And so uh, you know, I uh, and I I was you know really it took me a little while to look at this list and. I printed this list out if the five of us would look at this list. And um, let's uh, be able to read it. Well, no, I just, I know, but what you have to understand yes, is I, I, I was sort of shocked that the general manager Spears would send this down to us because let's, let's just look at some of the questions because I don't think we have the knowledge base to do this. We don't. There's probably not a mud, I probably know more than most mud directors, and I can tell you I can't answer these questions. So let's just, let's just go. So look at 1B. I just chose. So maybe you maybe you all can give me your expertise on this topic because I, I don't know any. So let's go, how complex are the maintenance requirements for each alternative? That's the four alternatives. And how many points of potential failure? So please tell me your expertise on the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Where are the potential points of failure? I, I, I'm just asking if you if you know them, please express yourself. I don't know them. 
The process that we're going through is, is, is very similar to the process that we went through when we had the all board meeting at the SGRA. It, it is. And that is um, not a particular financial oriented or engineering oriented presentation. This gives us a choice. It's kind of like with children. You want to have the asparagus or you want to have the sp uh, spinach? Yeah, but you know what asparagus is. You know what spam is. Well, look, okay. my point. We need to have actual, measurable, definitive uh, points on every one of these. I agree, but we don't have them. They were not provided. Case, this is not something to go forward with. Uh, uh, I, to do this in advance without having factual financial data. Yeah. We're not educated enough on these issues to be. No, we're not. You're not. I mean, I, I find right. it. Let's translate yeah, to the common denominator, okay? Uh, if we make it at no cost to the residents, would that make them less happy or more happy? And the answer is we don't know the answer to that, because unless if we raise it a nickel, the rate, people will complain. So the fact is we're going to have to defend whatever decision we make, regardless of the uh, decision tree that we go through in this presentation. And I find that the decision tree, which I said to you on the phone the other day, is, is well done, but it doesn't have the facts that we need to be able to make the decision or at least direct ourselves to finding what we don't know. And that's that's my observation. I, mean, I, I, I go back to the how good it is. I'd like to see the financials. Usually there's a big document that describes what all these are. Where is that? Oh, uh, like there's, that's all these things are like. Well, you know, the intention, although, and it's been stated that, you know, there's still, uh, confusion as to some of these items is confusion. if you were looking at the constructability and sequence, et cetera, that's the, that's the parent criteria. Their intention was to break that down. And for now it may have further complicated it. It sounds like for some. And so I think we need that feedback so that we can give that to them. So that once you get to the point where you, we do need to do this, that you don't have those questions. I think that's, what everybody's goal is. is that we, that was see, Eric, I, I don't see how you even begin. I mean, I got another one. How many installations are there in each alternative in technology in the U.S. and Texas? <laughs> I mean, I know that. I mean, you know, let's do another one. Well, but remember, though, too, is the, the directors are not going to be asked to get that granular. The, the criteria selection is on the parent criteria. Now, I understand that within the parent criteria, all those things are in there, and they need to be understood to understand the parent criteria. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you, know, you know, some of the months, I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, you know, I got this out and I blew it up. <laughs> you know I mean? And I said, oh, let's look at this. And I started looking at it, and I'll be honest with you, I probably couldn't, I, I have, I probably have more experience than any other mud director because I've been digging through all this stuff, and I, I can't answer any of them. This is a PhD course. In yeah, I can't answer any of them. And so you want us to to create a scale service, a, weight, a weighted criteria and something that we don't have the, the knowledge to do. I do have the knowledge to how to conduct a financial review on a cost costed item. You give me the quotes. Were you thinking you have... of an instinctual mechanism as to what you thought the constituency would want to know? You as a strong I don't, I'm not involved in this. Yeah, no. I didn't, what does water? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't create this. I got gotcha. you. So uh, the engineering consultant that is doing it created this. I'm I'm the middle. I'm middle man. This to yeah. you. Okay. Now I have some of the same questions that you do. But what we've been asking the directors to do is share your concerns, which is exactly what you're doing. But that consultant so, the answer to all. No. Yes. Well. Oh, no. Some of them were asked and they under, they recognized that like one of the things that kind of was consistent in the questioning was um, I'm trying to see if there was example like like there was question of in the description part that maybe and there's multiple sentences in in a couple of them. Well, well, if I knew the first sentence isn't the second sentence the alternative and if you've got both in in the same uh, description, then how would I choose one or the other if I'm only supposed to choose one? That was kind of some of the dialogue that was going around at the trustee. So the consultant seemed to, again, I'm I'm reporting, what, I was at the same meeting that David was reporting. The instinctual response to this was, what do you think your constituency, constituency will want to know most? 
And that's why it was weighted that way, not expecting us or anybody to know the answers to these because obviously we're not engineers. So obviously 75%, what is the impact? Of course, people want to know what is the impact of the community, odor, smell, that's weighted the most, 75%. So it looks to me like it was just based on what do you feel is going to be of the biggest concern to the community? So it was an instinctual play. It wasn't an educated play. So, so Mr. Meek, so General Manager Spear obviously direct this, this to come to us. So what was his expectation? You know, what was his expectation? You know, having sent this down, this came from the, w, the, the SRA. So what was General Manager Spear's expectation? So a couple of things. One, I don't speak for anybody but myself. So I'm not going to answer that question. Uh, but second, General Manager Spear did not send this down, right? So he is aware of every project, but he does not review all, every document that leaves the authority. Nobody has that much time. This was developed, as Eric said, by the consultant, unbiased, based on their engineering prowess. There was not input guidance bias from Woodlands Water nor the River Authority. This is strictly from the consultant to y'all, right? So keep in mind though, what I understand from this, this is being done now and the questions that you would ask on how you score the data when you get the data, because the data will come from the, the rest of the study that they're doing. So come March, April, May, when they have their condition assessments done, they have their financial analysis, the rest of their studies done, they will take that data compare it to those questions or however they're adjusted, and then there will be a score at the end of it. Because you've all said it, nobody has the answers to all those questions. What they're asking is, what questions do you and your constituency need to know and have answered to move forward with any one of these options? Because if you have the answers, then you make the questions, did you just bias towards the one you want? The absence of of numerical information, engineering data, okay? Uh, we have to make assumptions on how we wish to create a hierarchy of need for this. And my only observation to that is we're, we're, we're being forced into decisions without having adequate background information to make that decision on. And uh, I, I would postpone, the, I, I mean, I don't to give Eric feedback, the feedback will not be pleasant, but it's, it's a fact that we can't do anything. We're falling into the same trap, I'm gonna call it trap, the same situation that we had when we were going forward with that half a billion dollar project for infrastructure build out. And uh, in looking at the process, it was flawed because we developed the data afterwards and that gave us a justification for whichever way a particular party wanted to go. And uh, we're doing it again. So I would respectfully suggest that uh, whoever is in charge, and it looks like since Ed sent the note to uh, uh, Eric that he's in charge of this, that he, right. that he goes back and gets factual data to give to all the mud board directors. So when we do get together, either individually or as a group, that we can at least ask some intelligent question to be able to frame how we create this hierarchy that's responsive to our constituents' needs. We can't do it without that. And that's perfect. Uh, that's the type of stuff we're looking for. To keep in mind, this decision matrix was requested by the trustees by November 1st. That was a deadline that we didn't set, the trustees had provided to us. So we have to honor the deliverable. So if that comes out that y'all want the data, this and that, however it ends up being, doesn't matter to me. Yeah, from what I, my observation in the trustee meeting was that the consultant was very open to you know all of the feedback and wanted to make it so that there you know everybody understood it so this was the draft it came out they asked give us all the feedback as best you can and so that's that's where we're at and ideally uh they take heed of the feedback that comes from the directors and adjust this thing. Well, i haven't studied those documents so i will do that oh that's and i'll get back I, I, i'd just like to say again you know we we sat through a under General Manager Houston's leadership, we sat through a lot of pro presentations that were flawed, I mean, incomplete. And now we're following the same path again. And I'll tell you, between General Manager Spear and Board President Anderson, they need to start participating in this. You know what I mean? They defer too much 
to the to the employees and it they need to participate in this stuff as we continue to get stuff that's really not very good I can not very good that the general manager is invited to some of the key meetings on your question of did he review this and direct it down to us to my knowledge he has not I've and never seen him at a has- trustee meeting to be honest with you I'm sorry I've never seen him at a trustee meeting general manager Peter, uh, Spear Neither have you seen uh, General Manager Houston? Was he? He was here. No, but I, I can never saw him either. I'm honest. sure you. One of the benefits of your video recordings is that he does have the ability and he has routine. I know he is. So. I know he watches these videos, at least some of them. So I have a question for the consultant. Um, usually, you based off. You usually create these based off previous projects. Mm-hmm. Can you ask him what municipal municipalities he's based this matrix off of? Let us know. Sure. Um, and any, any other questions, please email them to me or send them to me, and I'll get those collected and send them all. Happy to. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I guess we have no act on this one. No, no, no act. No act. Okay, just information. Okay. Well, act. Get me uh, feedback. <laughs> That's the first act. <laughs> so, so some uh, boards were having a meeting in December to discuss this. I, I personally. I don't know how if we got together and, 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 and looked at this matrix, I don't see how we can add any value personally any because we don't have the uh, the detail. And um, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I kind of struggled with this until a day or so ago, you know, trying to figure out how to approach this. And then finally, I can, I, I started looking and thinking about the questions and uh, we're not qualified to ask those things. At least I'm not. And uh, so, well, and you know, I guess that's our feedback. Okay. And um, anybody else, they can send a question, Eric. No. Okay, let's go to number 15. Number 15. Fred. Okay. Uh, the report is done. Uh, it's presently in my hands. Um, in conversations uh, with Eric uh, yesterday, I found there was one error that needed to be corrected. Um, and uh, I'm in the process of doing that. I thought I'd be able to have it back out today, um, but I couldn't get all the attachments, the exhibits scanned, and I certainly couldn't do it when I was in Virginia. So uh, at this point, the report is done. The most uh, significant change on the SFDUE price point is uh, what I learned in talking to uh, Adam Cohn at Baird. And um, the key points there is when I gave an estimate, if it wasn't the last meeting, the meeting before, and what I found, uh, the SFDUE water price in the SJRA was uh, $1,828. I rounded the numbers appropriately uh, going forward. Uh, for wastewater it was 1569 in every case, uh, interest and carrying charges were not included. So what I used was uh, uh, supplemental agreement uh, number 9, 10, and 11, which talked about a 40-year term uh, for the relationship, the contract with uh, the MUDs from the SGRA. I used that uh, coupled with a conventional uh, rule of 72s, um, interest calculation to develop a fully burdened cost. And one of the things I learned is that the best way to do it and the most conservative way to do it was to look at a 25 year term, which is appropriate, I think, uh, a 5% cap rate on the interest, uh, which is what the standard was, um, and uh, take a look at that. And the new pro rate of base is not 10 to 14,000, um, my calculation shows that it is uh, $7,151 for the water SFDUE, and for wastewater, it's $6,718. Uh, what I added to that was some type of prorata of debt. And um, I used this month's closing debt number for MUD 46, which is almost $43 million against a net asset value of some 80 plus million um, for MUD 46. And uh, I 
also converted that to a 25 year term and also looked at the carrying costs. The carrying costs as Baird worked out and the attachment will be to this uh, uh, report comes out to 67%. So bottom line, for every dollar we borrow, we pay back $1.67. When you build all of that in, it basically says our number should cap out at between 7,100 and 6,700. So once this report is done, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna send it out to both uh, Eric, Ed, and David for review. Uh, when I get that feedback, um, I will then, sometime in the next couple of weeks, I hope, uh, or sooner, uh, get their feedback. And like I did for the uh, proposal that we, we, I was working on, I guess, a year or two ago, um, on the development of the district, the development status of the district, um, I will include those notes in red type so people will understand if I have a difference of opinion with Eric, it'll be there, or Ed, as the case might be. And uh, it'll be all there for you to see, and we can then make decisions and discussions on how to handle it. But uh, at the conclusion of this report, I have, um, let's see, 12 proposals and observations that this board needs to discuss, think about, and make a decision on. So uh, they're all itemized here. And I've got about a half a dozen schedules. The most interesting one is the uh, MUD 46 2023 audit report uh, from Knox and Cox, which was uh, very helpful along with Baird's analysis. And that will be attached as well, too. So any questions? When will you have the final? Once I get feedback out. from those two okay. gentlemen. Okay, so we can see it before the first of the year? I defer to uh, to both Eric and Ed for okay. that. I mean, I could give a copy. Uh, well, I could send a copy to Shelley for distribution of where it stands now, but it may be very far off the mark on, okay. until I get okay. feedback from those two gentlemen. I don't mean to pressure you any. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it's it's incredible. It's about 200, 220 pages worth of data to go through, and the supplemental agreements um, are confirmed using conflicting and don't have a standard in which the for-profit world bases its decisions on so um for me it was a huge amount of learning a, a huge amount of alcoholic beverage consumption and uh, the result of that is this with a uh, Plenty of errors to the 11th hour which i'm glad i caught the big one which is the one eric talked about that uh, the developers did, in fact, invest in the, the baseline infrastructure for this community, tens of millions of dollars, and uh, it wants to argue maybe a hundred million dollars or more. Uh, but what's not been addressed, and none of the documents that I've got demonstrate that, uh, is that there were incremental costs along the way that were highlighted in the 11 supplemental agreements that were never included. In the, in the SFDUs, which is why I'm using the $43 million of outstanding debt that will be retired by 2030 uh, as a benchmark to say, I'm not looking back, I'm only looking forward. And of the $43 million, this is the fully burdened weight on the existing SFDUs that this district has at this point in time. So it's, I think it's well built. But uh, I'm not perfect, so I'm going to allow the two people who have a lot more knowledge than I do on this subject to make the decisions. And um, I, I will ask for a comment by Brian. Um, I know you weren't involved in the creation of all of those supplemental agreements because they're all over the place. And uh, I know you to be more precise and, and detailed. So uh, I look to you for guidance once they make the decision because combining all of these supplemental agreements is going to be complex, difficult, but I think we need to get rid of them all, get a new contract that is straightforward and a supplemental agreement that details everything properly. So we now have new benchmarks and then we can use those benchmarks going forward so future board members can make fact-based decisions that will help our constituency. We don't have that today. And you'll see that with all of the detail going through the historical analysis here, uh, what I call is historical overview and support references. 
very confusing. And I'm trying to, to, like I said, it's a couple of hundred pages worth of. Do any of them contradict each other? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, and some SFDU numbers from previous uh, supplemental agreements are higher than others going forward. And I know the cost of the SJRA has not gone down. So there's, there's some, somebody was not watching it and all I can say it was frustrating, difficult, but I think I've now got a benchmark with their input, I'm set to go. But I look to you at that point. That's project. In fact, uh, Ed said that I should be talking to you about making these changes. We can talk about that and, and this. I think those are two separate, uh -huh. two separate issues. What you're looking to do in calculating a, a new SFDB cost versus you know contract related issues, because you can charge, as we talked about before, um, or SFD leads, regardless of what's in the, you know, what you paid for necessarily, as long as you have an impact fee study with all the, the statutes. Well, we, I, I've been guided that impact fees is a bad phrase to use. However, uh, I call them something else in my report. So uh, you'll see that in, in the detail. Okay. Finish, Brad? Done. Do we want to add, put this on an agenda item for January? Um, I will have this to Tom's point. I'm going to have this out to Ed and Eric um, uh, tomorrow. I'm going to give you a draft of this one before I leave. Um, but my objective is to have it done as my Christmas present to myself. So hopefully <laughs> you guys will be able to yeah. respond what, accordingly. What's up January? We're not meeting in. We're not meeting. I know that. So uh, therefore, yeah, okay. therefore January. But I hope that it's done and I have it approved in December so I can get it out for that meeting. That's my objective. It's a Santa's gift to us. Yeah. yeah. Let me get let me get my Thanksgiving dinner and then I'll yeah. 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 absolutely. <laughs> okay, so the attorney report. Nothing additional. Okay. General go. manager report. Okay, I'm gonna go quick. Um and, and it is pretty quick. Um just want to update you the community work group with uh, Water Run Little Woodlands. First meeting, uh, Susanna is invited uh, as a member. Uh, that invite went out, I think, last week. Um, the meeting is uh, December 2nd at 1130, and that'll be at the township. Uh, just because we don't have a room big enough. Um, <clears throat> um, wanted to let you know, you remember earlier this year, I talked about building a capital improvement plan, specifically, I mean, water, sewer, and drainage, but my bigger concern is ditch con conditioning, ditch pipe conditioning, and those things. We're gonna start running the ditches next week uh, with the equipment now that we have in play. Um, the mowers got done over the last three weeks or so, so we're gonna start uh, hitting that, really doing a full-blown uh, ditch assessment. We're looking at, you know, siltation, flowage, pipes, pipe, uh, uh, Remind me how often we look at those stitches. Well, the mowing contractor has, uh, over the last few years, provided a, um, a summary report um, once a year. And then, uh, historically, uh, WWA has gone in and addressed some of the more, you obvious. know, obvious things or whatever. What I, but we really didn't put together the bigger plan. So really what I want to do, uh, because I think coming out of this, there's probably some benefit in developing an ongoing maintenance program for ditches, maybe cleaning certain ones that silt in a little faster on a more regular basis, things like that. Also, there could be some large capital uh, costs here, potentially. And so I want to do that uh, Woodlands wide because there, if we eventually get into projects or a project, there will probably be some con economies of scale, you know, if we're, you know, not just focusing on 46 ditches, but you know, the bigger thing. So first we need the data and that's what we're doing. I hope to have that by the end of the year. We'll then utilize that data, the in the field data, eyes on the ground. I'm, I'm going to be going because I want to learn about our ditches as well and the condition. Then we're going to start building the, the capital improvement plan. And my goal is to have that ready to go for when we start talking budget in the next summer. Uh, that would be my goal, hopefully earlier, but um, that's the goal. Do you so. a quarterly monitoring program for the ditches would be something that would I'm, be indicated? I'm working on all that. So um, we the ditches are mowed quarterly, um, and so we have the our consultant who mows them has eyes on the ground, and we've told them, you see anything major, I need to know now. But now with the uh, the new equipment that we have to kind of run them, 
we've also talked about utilizing drones and certain things is that what I want to build, and this is what I, I think I've mentioned, is a ongoing maintenance uh, or assessment program where we do run them quarterly. And my thought is run them quarterly after the mowings and then after major storm events. So kind of that's kind of the two triggers, yeah. Um, and you know, once you once you have the big analysis, it's not going to change much per quarter, you know. But um, we can start to assess low risk, medium risk, high risk, and then start putting those into a capital plan. So when you say run, that means you and Kim will get in your in your sweatsuits and, and running, running the path. Huh? We're going to use the UTB, but yes. <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen them stand up? <laughs> And so uh, we are going to uh, just yeah, start running. Just yeah. getting our eyes on. Okay, let's let's move on here. Uh, trust the report. We kind of talked a little bit about that already. Anything else? I don't. Uh, no closed session. Thank God. Uh, reconvene in open session. Don't worry about that. Okay. Discuss any matters to for placement on future agenda. Reds matter issue. Anything else? That's it. Yeah. Just the end of week. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Um, oh, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we defer the December meeting. Unless we're called to a special session. No, he only mentioned it. We oh, make, I, okay. We got That's, formally okay. doing it. I thought we did. Okay, let's uh, make a <laughs> second for uh, Tom's motion. Second. <laughs> All Call the vote. Yay. All say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so I uh, I make a motion that we adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>